Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I'm really excited about today's video. Today we're going to look at the super popular question, can the garbage disposal and the dishwasher be on the same circuit? Should it be, what does the NEC have to say about it? What does your local inspector have to say about it? Are they wrong? Let's go ahead and get to it. Hey y'all, I want to take a quick second to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. It's Markate. Markate is an epic customer relationship management software. You can do estimating, invoicing, job scheduling, payment processing, and so much more all in one place. We'll learn a little bit more about them later, but for now, let's get back to the grind. Before we get started on this, we have to treat these pieces of equipment like we would a refrigerator, like we've learned about in the past, or anything else. That if the manufacturer's instructions call for a dedicated circuit, that supersedes the code, and you should run a dedicated circuit to either one of these appliances. We're going to have two different scenarios today, and for both of these, we're going to assume that the appliances do not require a dedicated circuit, although it's becoming more common all the time. We're going to say for this scenario, we're on a 20 amp branch circuit, but these same rules apply for a 15 amp branch circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at scenario one. Scenario one says I have an 11 amp dishwasher that's not a continuous load. That means it's not expected to run at its maximum current for three or more hours. And also let's say I have a 5 amp disposal. So in this scenario, all we would have to do is take 11 plus 5, that equals 16 amps, and the answer is yes, you are allowed to run these both on the same circuit. You may have failed an inspection, inspection for it in the past. You may have an inspector that misunderstands the code, and we're going to break that part of it down here in a little bit. But the answer is yes, you are allowed to put these on the same circuit. And this is spelled out in 210.23. Now, this is a very short but very dense section of the code that you have to read many times until you really understand it. And I'll be honest with you, there's parts of this section of the code book that I did not understand until recent years. So this is laid out in 210.23, but specifically what we're going to learn today is laid out in 210.23b2. We're going to talk more about it here in just a few minutes. Now let's look at scenario two. Let's say we have an 11 amp dishwasher and it is a continuous load. Many dishwashers nowadays are programmable for way more than three hours. I've got one in my kitchen that can run for five or six hours. So, in my opinion, that one is considered a continuous load. Maybe your inspector doesn't consider it, but if I'm your inspector, I do. So, we're going to say for this scenario that this one is a continuous load. All right, that's fine. We have a 5 amp disposal. Can we still put this on the same circuit? Well, let's just do the math. By code, we'd have to take that 11 amps, multiply it by 1.25. That would give us 13.75 amps. All we have to do is add the 5 amps on top of it. And then we end up with 18.75 amps. So the question is, can we still put it on the same circuit? And the answer is absolutely yes. But you might say, wait, coach, what's going on? What about the 50% rule? I've always thought that if one of the pieces of equipment takes up 50%, you know, more than 50% of the circuit, that you couldn't put it on the same circuit. And that's a big misunderstanding in our industry. There are inspectors even in our area that still believe this and I want to break that down now. All right guys before we go any further I want to take a look at our sponsor Marquette and today we're going to learn how to do a new estimate in their system. So today we're going to be doing a standard estimate but you do have other options. So we come down here and we're going to select our customer either do a new customer right there on the spot or select from an existing list. Here is where we're going to do our job location and then we also have the opportunity to name this project. We're going to call this one the Smith Project. As we scroll down a little bit further, we can change our estimate number to whatever we want it to be. We can change the estimate date while at the same time changing the expiry date of the estimate. I love here that we can type in the PO number. So as our employees go out and get material, we can all be on the same PO so we know how to build the customer. Here's where we're going to start installing our line items. We can add as many as we want. We're going to call this electrical. We're going to say it's for $6,000. And we're going to say that this customer is a veteran and we want to give a 10% veterans discount. They make it super easy. You can do it in dollars or percentage and we're going to do a 10%. Thank you for your service. So as we scroll through here, we also can set our tax rate either on material or labor if it's required. And I love this part right here, y'all. You can actually put your markup right there in dollars or percentage. We're going to do a standard 20% markup. 
Then we're going to scroll on down. We're going to set our deposit amount and we're going to set that at $3,000. On the left hand side, we can do a uh, message to our customer, real short and simple. And on the right hand side, we can do our terms. Now they put some sample ones in here for you, but you can actually change them. This is where you upload a file, like maybe some pictures from the estimate. And then I love this option down here. You can actually do internal notes to other employees. And you might want to put something like, hey, this is a long-term customer. So your men or women will know to take care of them when they're out in the field. Then all we have to do is click preview and we can see what it looks like. From here, we can click schedule, submit estimate, we can do a PDF or print it, and we can also physically view the estimate. So we can look down through it. Oh, over here on the right hand side, it shows you who made this draft. So you can find out what one of your employees actually did the estimate. Then as we scroll down, make sure all the terms are looking good, make sure I like everything. It goes ahead and it puts the deposit and the type of payments for the customer, which you can modify with inside the system, which I really love. Then we go down through it. And if we want to come back, all we have to do is go to edit, make some changes, and that's it. Let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at how a lot of people think the 50% rule works. And I was one of them in the past. I still have inspectors to this day that, that still feel this way. And the 50% rule says that no one fixed piece of equipment can take up more than 50% of a branch circuit. And if you stop reading, then that would be the truth. But if you continue reading, you'll find that it's just not the facts. So let's go ahead and unpack this one piece at a time. I'm going to read the code and then we're going to break down what it means. So it says utilization equipment fastened in place. It says the total rating of utilization equipment fastened in place other than luminaries shall not exceed 50% of the branch circuit ampere rating where lighting units, cord and plug connected utilization equipment that is not fastened in place or both are supplied. A lot of people used to read this code and you can let me know if you were one of them or if you still have inspectors today that still enforce it this way. They thought that if a dishwasher was 10 amps, then you could add the disposal on there as long as both of them didn't equal more than 20. But if your dishwasher was 10.1 amps, then you could not add anything else and it had to be a dedicated circuit. But that's just not what it's saying here. This only applies if those other outlets are supplying lighting or cord and plug connected portable equipment. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually run your kitchen lights and your dishwasher on the same circuit. It's totally legal. But this code limits you on that. It's saying, hey, if you have a 10 amp dishwasher, then you can go ahead and run those kitchen lights. But if you had a 10.1 amp dishwasher, you no longer can run those kitchen lights and the dishwasher. It's not saying the dishwasher has to be dedicated. You just can't run those kitchen lights or other receptacles that are going to serve cord and plug connected portable equipment. But what this code does allow you to do is to continue to add other fixed pieces of equipment all the way up to your branch circuit rating, meaning you could have the, the 11 amp dishwasher and the 5 amp disposal and you're totally fine. It has nothing to do with the 50% rule when you're dealing with two fixed appliances. That rule only applies if those other outlets are supplying lighting or other receptacles that are supplying cord and plug connected equipment. So that's something that, you know, it's, it's a very tough part of the code to understand. But if you, if you look at it and you read it, you'll be able to see it very clearly. It's not changed in several code cycles and it's not going to change any time soon. So I really hope that this brought some clarification. And just to recap, you can run the garbage disposal and the dishwasher or two other fixed pieces of equipment on the same circuit and go ahead and fill that circuit up all the way to the max of its breaker as long as you're applying any continuous load 1.25s on equipment that is deemed a continuous load and as long as you're adding those two together and it doesn't equal more than the rating of your branch circuit as long either 15 or 20 amp at the same time you can actually run lighting or other receptacles off that circuit but not one of any of those fixed pieces of equipment are allowed to take up more than 50 percent of the circuit it can take up 50 percent on the nose but it can't take up 51 percent 
At that point, you would have to pull the lighting and general receptacles off. You'd have to power them another way. And then you could continue to add that circuit for the dishwasher up with other fixed appliances all the way up to 20 amps. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I hope that this brought a little bit of clarification for you today. Now listen, if you want to run a dedicated dishwasher circuit, I'm cool with it. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I hope these videos add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. If you need anything from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.